Greetings, brothers and sisters. God bless each and every one of you today. Hope everybody's doing well. Again, if you are subscribed to this channel, we are watching for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Titus 2.13, looking for that blessed hope in the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus is coming soon, and we're going to be watching on this channel. Again, we are not going to set dates because we do not know when that day is. But we very clearly see that day approaching, and we will be watching on this channel until the trumpet sounds at the appointed time, and Jesus Christ comes for his church. Folks, please pray for those in the Ukraine right now that are getting, get, getting caught in the crosshairs of this war that's going on right now. Please pray for, the, for those that have lost family members, casualties, but also pray for those in hiding, those that are fearing for their lives right now. Um, let's pray for these people, but also let's pray that through this, that many come to a saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, because that is what is most important right now. Today's message is titled, We May Be Witnessing the Rise of Gog, G-O-G, Before Our Very Eyes. Folks, I want to make something very clear right off the bat. I am not being dogmatic uh, when I say that Vladimir Putin is, the, is Gog, G-O-G, spoken of in Ezekiel chapter 38. Uh, however, I want to make it very clear also that everything he is doing right now, everything he's done recently, but he's doing right now, uh, I think you can add to the resume, his resume, the possibility that he may be the Gog spoken of in Ezekiel chapter 38. You know, and I, I want to kind of talk about that today. You know, I've, lately I have been hearing a lot of different reports coming out from different world leaders saying that they have noticed a sudden change recently in Vladimir Putin. I've been seeing several of these different types of stories over the last few days, folks, but this is one that I just came across from Politico, an article titled, Finland's President Sees Changes in Putin. It was a different kind of behavior. And it's not just Finland, folks. Many different world leaders are coming out and saying the same thing. They're noticing a sudden change. Something's very different right now. Suddenly, a sudden change and how Vladimir Putin is acting. Vladimir Putin's ego has skyrocketed uh, since he has decided to invade the Ukraine. And the words that are coming out of this man's mouth, I mean, the recent threats, especially against the West, uh, threatened, you know, when he invaded, when he started the invasion of the Ukraine, he said anybody that interfered with his invasion um, would face the worst, I think he said the worst crisis, the worst consequence that nation has ever will ever experience. So he's sending out these very clear threats uh, against anybody that stands against him. And look at what's happened, folks. The Ukraine is on its own against Russia. Russia begins this full-scale invasion of the Ukraine, and Ukraine's defending itself pretty good right now. The last I heard, uh, Kiev is still surrounded by the Russians. Russia wants to take, obviously, Kiev uh, to install a new government, uh, a pro-Russian government there. But you see the Ukrainian president and others that are very clearly taking a stand. Uh, one Ukrainian soldier even sacrificed himself when he blew up that bridge uh, so the Russians couldn't get across. But Putin has got all of Europe in fear. The countries around the Ukraine right now, especially the NATO countries, are getting ready. Um, you know, because they don't know, you know, once he takes the Ukraine... Once he does whatever he's doing with the Ukraine, they're wondering if they're next. But anyway, you're, you're hearing about all these world leaders coming out and saying something has changed in Putin. He's like a raging bull right now. He's ambitious. He's power hungry. And not only, again, you see what he's doing with the Ukraine right now, and no one is stopping him. Okay? You have the other countries around the Ukraine that are in fear right now, wondering what he's going to do next. And then he has his eyes on, you know, what he's doing in Syria right now. Again, Putin is building his presence in Syria, all right? Uh, and we know he has his eyes on Israel. Make no mistake about it, folks. That is coming. Ezekiel 38 tells us that is coming. But we see Putin right now like a raging bull, all right? Uh, just power hungry, you know, wants oil and gas, obviously, too, which is why eventually I think he's going to go after Israel on its northern border. But I want you to connect the dots with me on this, folks. Are we witnessing 
the rise of Gog right now in Ezekiel chapter 38. Well, let's investigate this. So for those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, over 2,500 years ago, the prophet Ezekiel predicted a massive invasion of Israel in the latter years by a coalition of nations led by Russia. I like to call them the big three, Russia, Iran, and Turkey. But Russia is going to be the, the main one heading this. Ezekiel chapter 38, verse 1 to 6, lists several names that will be a part of this assault force. Let's read these verses together. Ezekiel chapter 38, verse 1 to 6. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, G-O-G, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against him, and say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth in all thine army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords, Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya with them, all of them with shield and helmet, Gomer and all his bands, the house of Tagarma of the north quarters, and all his bands, and many people with thee. So Ezekiel chapter 38, verse 1 to 6, speaks very clearly of a coming invasion that is going to occur on Israel's northern border. All right. Uh, if you see on the screen here, if you look at the names mentioned, all right, Magog, Rosh, Meshach, Tubal, Persia, Cush, Lud, Gomer, Tulgarma. On the left side, you have the ancient name. On the right side, you can pause it if you need to. You have the modern name. But you basically have Russia, Iran, and Turkey. I call them the big three. But Russia is going to be the main one leading this invasion. All right. You have Ethiopia, Sudan, Libya, Algeria, Central Asia. But anyways, those nations led by Russia all right, are going to attempt an invasion on Israel's northern border. And when you read Ezekiel chapter 38 and Ezekiel chapter 39, which I encourage you to do, God is going to destroy those nations. All those that come against Israel. All right. Israel's on, it's going to be on its own. No one's going to come to Israel's aid. There's going to be certain nations that protest the invasion, but Israel's going to be on its own. But it's not on its own because God is going to defend Israel and destroy those nations that come against Israel. But if you read the first two verses again, Ezekiel chapter 38, verse 1 to 2, And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, G-O-G, the land of Gag Magog, the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal, and prophesy against him. So very clearly there, Gog, G-O-G, is the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal, all right? The ancient kingdoms also near the Black Sea. But the term used for chief prince in the Hebrew is Nesi Rosh, all right? Which also means ruler or president. And some scholars believe that Rosh is not an adjective at all, but a noun denoting the name of yet another nation that will enter into the fray. So Gog, G-O-G, is the prince of Rosh, or the president of Rosh, or, with a little bit of help, the president of Russia. So when you read Ezekiel chapter 38, verse 1 to 6, all right, Gog, G-O-G, the prince of, chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, all right, is going to lead this coming invasion that's going to occur on Israel's northern border, right? And when you go a little further in verse 4, I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws. So uh, he's going to be pulling in the hook in the jaw. What is this, uh, the hooks in the jaws here? Well, I believe very clearly that all the nations mentioned in Ezekiel 38, they want Israel's gas and oil. And I believe what we're seeing right now, especially with Russia invading the Ukraine and no one coming to the Ukraine's aid, right? Uh, Vladimir Putin's ego is, has skyrocketed, right? Once he does this, he's going to have, you have the other countries around the Ukraine fearing that they're next, right? We know Russia's building its presence in Syria just north of Israel, right? And we know again that that's where the invasion is going to occur on northern, Israel's northern border. And we're told Gog, uh, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, which I just went over the translations with you, literally again, let me read this with you, um, in the Hebrew, the chief prince in Hebrew is Nesi Rosh, which could also mean ruler or president. Okay? 
So Gog, G-O-G, is the Prince of Rosh, or the President of the Prince President of Rosh, or again, with a little bit of help, the President of Russia. So with Putin acting the way he's acting right now, right, the way he just did with the Ukraine and no one to stop him, Russia building its presence in Syria, and we know Russia and these other nations mentioned in Ezekiel chapter 38 are going to want a piece of Israel's resources, especially its gas and oil. So, is Vladimir Putin, Gog, G-O-G, spoken of in Ezekiel chapter 38, uh, the prince of, a chief prince of Meshach and Tubal? Folks, the way he's acting right now, his ego has skyrocketed. He just went into the Ukraine again with no one to stop him. He, again, his ego has skyrocketed. He's flexing his muscles right now. The way he's acting, and with the, him building his presence in Syria the way it is right now, and his growing relations with Iran and Turkey and the other men nations mentioned in Ezekiel chapter 38, I look at this, and I look at what the Bible says, and I said, wow, this looks like it, he really could be G-O-G, Gog, spoken of, the chief prince, of, chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, spoken of in Ezekiel chapter 38. If you're watching this video right now, and you don't have Jesus Christ in your life, just look around the world right now. You notice something's not right. It's not. This ship is sinking. You need to get on the lifeboat right here and right now. And that lifeboat is Jesus Christ in him alone. Everything that we see occurring right now around the world, it proves several things. It proves the Bible is real. The Bible is alive. Jesus is real. Jesus is alive. And Jesus is coming back. You need to get saved right now. You need to get on the lifeboat right now because tomorrow is not promised. Jesus Christ is the only way to the kingdom of heaven, and he's the only name that can save you. Put your faith and your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ right here and right now. Put your faith and your trust in his blood. Believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. Paying your sin debt in full, the price that you can never pay on your own, Jesus paid it with his blood. So you could be reconciled back to him, forgiven of your sins, and be with him forever in heaven. So believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and he rose again. He resurrected on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. And do it now so you can be saved. You don't want to wait on this. I'm imploring you, look around this world and look at what your Bible says. We are living in the end times and Jesus is coming soon. Get saved and get saved right now. Jesus loves you. Jesus died for you and he wants you with him. He wants you with him in heaven forever. And keep watching with me. Keep looking up. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, he's coming. And he's coming quickly, one day very soon at the appointed time, sooner than most of us realize. Keep watching with me. God bless you all.